Yo, what's up, funky YouTubers? Welcome to this video. But before the video, before anything's happened, just like the video for no, no goddamn reason. Just flip and like that video and subscribe to me, even though you don't even know what my content's about. And you should subscribe to me anyway, because I'm saying subscribe to you. To me. Yeah, it's, it's, it's annoying, isn't it? Those goddamn annoying YouTubers. I'm not going to say millennial, but it's, it's kind of ringing a, ringing a little bell here in my brain. Just like that subscribe button, so click that, click that just the subscribe button and give it a little ding on that bell. Make sure you can get a ding from my notifications for the videos and then... I have no idea what I'm trying to do here. Today, we're going to be talking about something serious, which is contrary to the atmosphere that I'm building up right now. Today, we're going to be talking about why depressed people hurt themselves. So, quite an important video. Um, it's something that maybe eludes most people in society, especially when you're a kid, especially when you're a teenager, and there's some crazy Googles or crazy guys in your school who are going about dressing emo-ish or gothic. Guys wearing makeup eyeliner and cutting their wrists for no, for no reason and listening to depressing music and... It's very easily to, easy to assume that that's it, and they're doing it for attention, and they, they, they want to be in a trend. A trend, because, you know, people love to be in a trend by quitting themselves, because that's what people do. That's how far people go, they stop quitting themselves, like, for a trend. Hope I'm not being too aggressive with my standing, because that's not what I'm trying to do, I'm sorry. I'm trying to enlighten you, and that sounds even more patronising. So I'm going to go over three main things, reasons why people hurt themselves. Number one, probably one that you're most familiar with and one that you think is the, the main issue. People hurt themselves, people cut themselves visibly so that they can show people that they're in pain. Um, not for attention, which you might think. I guess that is attention, but it's, it's kind of kind of needed attention if someone's in that much pain that they want to cut themselves so that they, show, they can show you that they're in mental torture. It, it, it usually go, goes about that way. Um, there are some people who abuse this kind of thing and get in on the craze and they want the attention because they want to be... And I, have, I know people who, who have done that. And I know people who haven't. I know people who have cut places that people can't see, bled out a lot, gone to hospital. So there are there are other reasons, but this is the, this is then one of the reasons. It's very hard to express humanly how much you're in pain. It's all subjective. Pain is subjective and experiences are subjective and the the amount of things that you can comprehend from other people and how bad you can comprehend someone can be can be limited by your experiences. One of one of the most crazy things about the whole dep explaining depression to people is that people think that if you're not depressed, like if they're not, they're not depressed, but if they were gonna be depressed to the extent that maybe I was or someone else was, and that they've been hurting themselves and trying to commit suicide and stuff, that they would do it differently. That they would be logical. And that's complete bollocks. Hey, like most people, if you were just dropped right into the mental state that a severely depressed person has right now, you wouldn't know what to do. You'd be completely bewildered and amazed at how they're not just like killing themselves all over the place. Like, people don't do stuff like this if they're not in that much emotional pain. They might do it sometimes, but for the most of it, you have to be able to comprehend that what kind of mental state would you be in, that you would have to be in, so that you would quit yourself. And that's pretty bad, isn't it? And that's what it's like. If you could imagine how bad you'd have to feel over a long, long, long period of time impacting your life and slowly eating away at you, how, how much that would have to happen if you'd start cutting yourself, then you might be able to understand why people cut themselves. Yeah, I've had some really bad experiences in my life where 
you know, just people don't take you seriously. Like, I did start cutting because, cutting my wrists, because nobody was taking me seriously. Nobody was taking me as serious as, as I was in so much pain, like, so much mental torture. And it wasn't reciprocated and it wasn't, people weren't empathizing with me enough. That was, that's just one of the reasons. People, people do it because they want to show people they're in, that they're in pain. If you take it like, you know, you've got two guys called Jeff, look exactly the same, same attributes. Both say they're depressed. One's tried to kill himself. Which one are you going to take more seriously? Like, really? Like, people need this sort of logical, real world action in order to justify someone's emotions because it's hard to empathize. I don't, like, I can empathise with people like that, I don't need them to do that kind of thing. If they say they want to kill themselves, I'll take them seriously. People shouldn't have to actualise their mental pain in order to get the help that they need from their friends. You wouldn't get and they're not annoyed at someone who's, you know, got a heart condition. They need a new heart. Someone in your family, um, of course your parents are going to fork out to try and get you a new heart and people in the community are going to fork out to give you try and get you a new heart give you attention and come see you and all that kind of stuff just because it's physical like just because for some reason just because it's mental it, it means something different doesn't it so it's that's why people cut themselves not not for attention but just to let people know I'm in great physical and mental pain uh, the second reason why someone might hurt themselves is because they are zombified. They are numb, they're in emotional pain, but that, that emotional pain doesn't, it just, it doesn't follow the same, if you imagine like, a, like a, a graph, that the mental pain could be in on the side and time, it, it's not like sadness, it doesn't go up and up and up and up and peak and then go down and you feel good, all right, or you, you feel comfortable or, it's been relieved to some degree and it goes up again and it goes down and like you've, de you've dealt with it and you know that it's going to end soon and you're going to deal with it. The present is not like that. It's more like there's a little peak, there's a little level here that you need, that need that's needed to cry and that's needed to express your emotion and feel it in your body and let it overwhelm you and depression just keeps going up and then the level goes up and it just stays right under there all the time. There's there's no getting that release that you need. People do it because they need a release. They don't feel human. They feel like a zombie. They want to feel like they did when they were younger. Feel like they did when they were a child. The same reason why you would go to the movies to see something that you saw when you were a child. Not because it's great. It invokes some feelings of being a kid. And you could say the same about being happy. Like... People, people want to feel emotion, like, they don't want to be a zombie, they don't want to be depressed. It, it, it deludes me, because pe people don't understand that it's like, oh, you're depressed, why are you watch? Why are you listening to depressing things and watching depressing videos and cutting yourself, having all, make, making you depression worse, it's, it's actually not making you depression worse. If you're just listening to it, like music that's sad, just all the time, and you're not you're not really releasing any emotion. You you could say that it's not good. But for the, for the most of it, especially when you're a teenager, like listening to that music, you just it just reached a peak and it just pushed you over the edge, pushed you over that peak, and then you released all that energy, you released all that pain, and it goes down like and it drops down your depressed level and you feel better you feel better because you've cried your eyes out for like an hour or had a panic attack or you feel better because of it and people want that it's like a drug it's like i can feel bad for like five minutes and feel good for like three hours and it's the same thing with cutting yourself or hurting yourself i can slash my wrists it hurts like a motherfucker like it hurts a lot I can I can tell you that it's not painless. It's it's how you think it would be. I used to induce my own peaks 
like I would try to I'd listen to horrible, like depressing music and blast it in my ears and think about all the reason why I'm, I'm shitty and all the reasons why life is horrible and it would peak and then it'd go down and I'd be peaceful. You know, it's just, it's just always in your body, just storing up. Never, never, never gets released, just keeps getting stored and gets tighter and more compact and you just can't deal with it. That's why people cut themselves and hurt themselves. That's why. But you can get really depersonalized, depersonalization when you don't feel like yourself. The realization you don't, you know, you don't feel real. You feel like it's a dream. Depersonalization can also be like looking down on yourself and not associating your existence with yourself. It's it's a very strange concept. It's, it's it's very common in anxiety and depression, especially when you're younger, as a, as a coping mechanism to cope with this pain. There'd be some instances where I would, I just feel so bad that I just I. I'd go out at night, very late, in winter, while it was raining, just go for a walk in a t-shirt, freezing my ass off, just not caring about the cold. Like, the cold actually made me feel, like, alive. It's painful, like, you know, it's a bad, bad stimulus, it's not good for you. But for some reason, that was another way of me dealing with it, grounding myself in reality. And cutting, can, cutting yourself and hurting yourself can do that kind of thing. You know, it doesn't have to be just cutting, it could be burning or scratching or pulling your hair out or... It's this, it can ground you as well, relieve, relieve the, the pain and actual, actualize the pain in your physical being to the amount that you feel. So it's like, you always feel that horrible. It's just you only feel it now and it only goes in your, only comes out of your brain and acts on your body now when you have that release. That's. It's what it feels like. It's kind of what it feels like. It's pretty much spot on. Well done, Tom. Thank you very much. I'm very, very proud of myself. I'm going to give myself a medal. Feli, just to just to bring you back into the video, Feli, please don't do any shits on the floor with your little dirt balls, your little leafy shit. I joke and I love you. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe to Thomas. He cares about his followers and his, his watchers and he'd be very, very honoured if you could comment. And if you're not subscribed to me, make sure that you subscribe. Thank you, Feli. If it's the first time watching this, I'm not always talking about these very intense topics. Some other stuff, just talking about autism, just talking about general life. I've done some vlogs, like... But this is, this is like, the, the main stuff. This is the reason why I do YouTube and... You know, like, I need to I spend a considerable amount of time trying to think of ways of bridging understanding between people. Because a lot of people don't understand depression, anxiety, and self-harming to the extent that they should. And they don't believe it when they're like, you're being stupid, you know, when <laughs> you've got a horrible illness. Like, it's very crazy. Because everyone thinks they can cope with it until they get it. And then they're like, oh, that's why they're suffering. That's why they're hurting themselves. That's why they want to kill themselves. No. You know, people, people aren't always being stupid. They are in that much pain. But yeah. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I appreciate you so, so, so goddamn much. I had so much good, so many good comments and reviews and... Positive comments, that's that's a good one. It's kind of a basic one, what you're doing, Tom. And it makes me feel great. And there's, there's been one on my past and with with my delusions of grandeur and the, seriously this the just the response from that is just absolutely just blowing my mind. I guess you guys really do appreciate me with being open. Being at being open with you and speaking from the heart and not filtering myself or not trying to modulate my behavior so that I'm more exciting and you want to, you know, I'm actually having fun. Like if I laugh and stuff and I'm being stupid and silly, I'm not doing it. You know, it helps for content, but I'm, I'm doing it because it's just me. Like, seriously, like, I'm just goofy. It's probably starting to become more apparent because I'm swearing more. Turn around the video up.
but I keep getting lost in talking. I don't understand why, like, it's mad that I can just sit here and talk and nobody's listening. Like, it's crazy, isn't it? Anyway, I'll leave you on that. People seriously, if they're hurting themselves, they're trying to either give you a message or they're trying to cope with themselves without killing themselves, you know? It's pretty, pretty self-explanatory why someone would do that if they were in that much pain. And try and understand that that much pain, if that was happening to you, you, you may be, you may consider that kind of stuff rather than dismissing it and calling it silly or stupid or they're not stupid, they're strong, they're really strong people and they've had, they've had to deal with it a lot in their life and they've had to deal with a lot of shit from themselves maybe from other people as well I'm going to have a cup of tea I'm going to have some Vita Valerian root cup of tea, pocket of tea and I'm going to go for a nap that's a lie I'm probably going to stay up and do some work because I've screwed up my sleeping pattern and there's no tea in this it's all a lie the government is watching us the Illuminati is planning their next attack am I the Illuminati and they're controlling me? who knows I will divulge this information in the next video <laughs> Sleep deprivation to the max.